Hi there, welcome to our beginner's guide to V-Ray for Rhino, designed especially for you to quickly grasp the software and start rendering in no time. In this video, I'm going to show you an overview of setting up animations, including animating geometry and camera animations, denoising, and previewing your work. Before we dive in, make sure to download the project files linked in the video description so you can play around with the scene in your own time. First up, we're opening the V-Ray Asset Editor and setting up the denoiser. Since we'll be testing with V-Ray's Interactive Rendering, or IPR, we'll use the Allow Interactive Light Cache option. Using this pre-pass calculation helps optimize our workflow by automatically adjusting the white balance and exposure levels for the camera, adaptiveness for the lighting, and for faster rendering. Using IPR means we'll see changes in our scene instantly. Let's set a high noise limit for now. We're not focusing on quality at this stage. Then fire up the IPR. Our first animation will be driven by the position of the sun. For a natural feel, switch on procedural clouds. Pick your preferred location and date from Rhino's sun panel and preview the sun path. Notice that the clouds aren't moving. We'll fix that in the next steps. Adjust the procedural cloud parameters to your taste. Time to bring some life to those clouds. Turn on the dynamic clouds option. Depending on their direction and speed, they'll move and change with the sun in a time lapse. Now we're ready to set up the sun animation from the Rhino animation setup. Match the location, date, and time. Minutes between frames will give us the full animation frame range. We've set up the animation on Rhino's side. Now let's do this on the V-Ray side. When rendering production, pick V-Ray Denoiser for a more precise result. Choose the resolution and decide where you want the output file saved. Next, we'll preview our animation with incomplete renders and then pick up where we left off from the previous session. This approach is known as resumable rendering. We'll first render progressively with low quality and then up the quality without having to re-render what we've already done. Remember to switch on the animation toggle, then get the correct animation range and shorten it for the test. V-Ray begins rendering frame by frame, recording the rendered info as it goes. When everything is looking good, set the full animation range and increase the output quality. Start rendering and notice that V-Ray will take what's already been rendered and pick up where it left off. Now let's check out the result. Our next topic is setting up camera path animation. In this setup, we can include object animations based on a V-Ray proxy mesh or a V-Ray proxy scene. Let's see what it looks like. A V-Ray proxy mesh allows geometry from an external mesh to be imported and animated only at render time. A V-Ray proxy scene similar to a proxy mesh is a file format that allows geometry, materials, and lights to be shared between all platforms running V-Ray. This also supports animation. We can bring in animations made in different software and use them here in Rhino. The exact proxy scene we're using is from Chaos Cosmos, and we set up the animation in 3DS Max. The camera path animation relies on points or curves to direct camera movement. Make the starting camera active and preview with IPR. For this animation, we'll swap out the sun and sky with a simple dome light For a more realistic feel, let's switch on the depth of field effect. Since we have two cameras for the start and the end position, we'll animate the depth of field effect. Choose the camera target and focus the foreground based on the first camera's target position. Set the final camera position to active. The focus now is the midground, based on the second camera target position. The next step is to set up camera path animation from Rhino. The curves are based on the camera's position and target.
Now let's reveal the animated object. This is an animated V-Ray scene with predefined animation and materials. Depending on the object animation, choose the appropriate loop. For this case, one is our loop. If you're animating grass or a tree, the ping pong option would probably be best. Let's speed up the animation a bit. When we have an animated camera or objects, it's a good idea to turn on the motion blur option. We can denoise during the rendering or after it. Now we'll see how to denoise the image not during the rendering, but subsequently. Generate only render elements and run the rendering process on the chaos cloud. You can preview the animation directly from the Chaos Cloud site. Download the rendered output files. Open up the V-Ray standalone denoising tool. This tool is super handy when you have different types of animations. The built-in denoiser processes images frame by frame, but the standalone denoising tool lets you blend frames for a smoother result. You can also adjust the denoising quality without re-rendering. Navigate and load your V-Ray image file format or multi-channel EXR, then run the V-Ray standalone denoising tool. You can load this sequence into different post-processing software for further corrections. As part of the Chaos family, you'll get the Chaos Player with the V-Ray collection. The Chaos Player is designed for quick playback, color correction, compositing, and remote work. Make any corrections you want, and then export the sequence as an MP4 file. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. By now, you should know how to render different types of animations, like sun and sky, camera and geometry animations, and embed animations from other 3D platforms. Don't forget to check out the rest of our beginner series videos for V-Ray for Rhino, or check our blog and documentation for more tips and tricks. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. See you soon.